Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, October 2nd, 2018 edition of the Sand Center Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Honolulu, Hawaii. Facebook published a blog post with a bit more details about which vulnerabilities exactly were exploited in order to gain access to these 50 million accounts that I talked about yesterday. The exploit was a bit more complicated than what I envisioned. So first of all, it all starts out with viewing your own profile as a different user. In this mode, you're supposed to only be able to view your profile, not to make any changes to your profile. However, turns out there was one particular feature, and that's when you upload a video to a user's account to wish them a happy birthday. That was still available, so now you were able to upload a video to your own page while you were using this view as feature. The access token created when you're doing so had two important flaws. First of all, this access token was created for the user that you were impersonating. So that's essentially now how you got access to this user's data by using this access token. But the other problem was that this token was really only supposed to allow you to upload the video, nothing else. Well, in addition, it was actually possible to use that token to use the mobile Facebook app. So this is how the attackers were able to gain access to users' profiles. At this point, Facebook states they're still investigating, so they're still not 100% sure how many accounts were actually affected and what exactly was done with data or what was done to these accounts. Personally, I actually think it's nice of Facebook to provide some details about how these attacks work. Certainly, it doesn't look like a very simple flaw and something that probably took some work to really figure out how to exploit this vulnerability. On the other hand, well, uh, the vulnerable features apparently were made live uh, July 2017, so they're about a year old, so attackers probably had some time to play with them. One thing that tipped off Facebook that something happened was that all of a sudden this view as feature became a lot more popular than it used to be. And that's actually sort of another important lesson here if you can already uh, take lessons at this early stage. But monitoring your application usage is certainly important in order to figure out problems like this. And Adobe released a surprise update for Adobe Acrobat and Reader. This update applies for Windows as well as for the Mac and fixes about 80 different vulnerabilities. Many of them are rated as critical, allowing code execution. No real clue on why Adobe released this update uh, right now. I believe their normal patch Tuesday is coming up a week from today. None of these vulnerabilities appear to be currently exploited and Adobe did assign this a priority rating of two, believing that exploitation is not imminent. So nothing here from Adobe is indicating that you should rush out this patch and just apply your normal patch practice. And then we got yet another attempt to make the start TLS feature to encrypt email more reliable. I think I talked about this feature a couple times before. The latest attempt to make this feature work better actually came from the Electronic Frontier Foundation that started an start TLS everywhere feature. The start TLS everywhere feature by the Electronic Frontier Foundation did require sort of a list of all mail servers that do support start TLS. And well, that's uh, really not very scalable. This new approach, which was published as an RFC, that's uh, RFC 8461, does go a little bit a different route. It really follows the strict transport security pattern that we had for for HTTPS. With strict transport security, the web server does include a header whenever you connect to it via HTTPS in order to tell you that this website should always be connected to via HTTPS. This new SMTP MTA strict transport security feature follows a similar route. When you're connecting to the server, it will again transmit a special header telling you that this mail server is 
only reachable via HTTPS. Now, this of course, just like strict transport security for HTTP, requires that you first connect to the mail server via a connection that does not get intercepted in order to actually receive this header. But the idea overall here is that usually you connect to your mail server from networks that are somewhat trusted, maybe even your work network. If you're now taking your laptop or your mobile device and you're connecting, let's say, from a foreign country, then the mail client will realize that all of a sudden the start TLS field is removed and it knows that it's not supposed to connect to that mail server without encrypting the connection. We'll see how this feature gets accepted. The authors for this particular RFC are working for Google, Oath, Comcast, and Microsoft. So there are some big players here involved and uh, hopefully they will implement this feature. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.